Our lesson for this morning kicks off our series regarding the focus groups. And this one comes in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. Turn with me as we read from God's word. When the Philistines heard that Israel had assembled at Mizpah, the rulers of the Philistines came up to attack them. And when the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us, that he may rescue us from the hand of the Philistines. And then Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it up as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf and the Lord answered him. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that, but that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. The men of Israel rushed out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them all along the way to a point, where, to a point below Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far has the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and did not invade Israel's territory again. So ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you open your word to us. Give us your understanding. And then <coughs> enable us to place that wisdom in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Up to this point in reading of the scriptures, the Israelites had not done very well for a while. They had abandoned their God. They began to worship other gods and goddesses. And notice whenever they put their God on the shelf, things often always went downhill. The Philistines were dominating them and pursuing them and taking over their towns and their cities. They had lost the ark of the Lord. They had lost their focus. But then things started to look up. God stepped in. He stepped in to rescue them from themselves. The ark of the Lord had been returned to Israel. The Israelites turned back to the Lord. And Samuel called for them all to gather together to confirm their commitment to God by getting rid of all the foreign gods and the asterisks. The asterisks is a, actually a symbol of all the goddesses in the land. Now, Ashtoreth herself was a goddess, a goddess of love, fertility, and war, but she became the symbol for all goddesses in that land. They assembled at Mizpah to openly recommit themselves to God through repentance and prayer. The Philistines saw this as a great opportunity. They could attack because they're all there together and we could knock them out for good. Now, there are basically two reasons why uh, people like Israel would come together in a community. One was to assemble to get ready for battle. That was one reason that, that the ancients would gather in, a, in an assembly. They would get ready for battle and tell who's going to go where and what they're going to do. The second reason was to come together for worship and for repentance. And that's what they were doing. Now, the Philistines didn't know why they were gathering, but they saw this as a great opportunity because they were all gathered in one place. And the Israel's, Israelites knew that the Philistines were coming up after them and they became frightened. And so they asked Samuel to intercede for them. God came through for them again. After the battle, Samuel decided that he needed to erect a stone a stone of remembrance, the Ebenezer. Ebenezer is translated the stone of help. It would be a reminder to all generations that God's hand is in their history. 
Whenever something happened in their life and they came upon this stone, it reminded them of what God had done before, and it reminded them that God would come through again. Now, we all have, as I mentioned to the children here, we all have uh, memorials and, and um, stones or, or different things, that, that uh, monuments, different things that kind of remind us of things in our own personal history or our city's history or our state history. Last, uh, last year, I went with my son to uh, D.C., and of course, D.C. is filled with memorials and monuments to all the history of the, the, the United States. And my, we decided we would go over to see the uh, Jefferson Memorial, which I had missed. I've been to D.C. many times, but it's so far away, you've got to walk for miles to get to the Jefferson Memorial. And you're almost dead by the time you get there. But I decided that we, we needed to go there this, this time. And first time, I took an Uber over to Jeff, Jefferson Memorial. It was great. Seven bucks to get over to the, or five bucks or whatever to get over to the Jefferson Memorial. Now my son did all the work to get it, but I just had to jump in the car. But we took over, to, over a, an Uber over to Jefferson Memorial, and as we were walking up those grand steps into this beautiful memorial, I was overwhelmed by the beauty and, the, and what it meant to our country. And what Jefferson, and, and throughout the memorial, it, it talks about what he had done and what he had said in the speeches and in in his writings for our country. Well, all of us have those opportunities. And sometimes we forget what those memorials really mean. When, they, when the people of Israel became discouraged, the Ebenezer would be there for them. When all looked bad, the Ebenezer would give them hope. When they had lost their way, the Ebenezer would bring them back home. And when it comes to people of faith, I think sometimes we don't realize it, but yes, people of faith do become discouraged. People of faith are surrounded by their enemies at times. People of faith do lose their way. People of faith, people of faith do need God to, do need something to remind them that God is there our stone of help, our, our Ebenezer. And every person of faith tends to have one. You may not realize you have one, but you do. So what is your Ebenezer? What is your stone of help? Your reminder that God comes through. Is it vivid memories of times when God stepped in when things were really going bad for you? Are there maybe prayers that were unanswered that you at, time, at the time thought it was awful that God wouldn't answer those prayers, but later on you found out that God was only protecting you? Or when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death alone, but then you discover that you are not alone and you never have been alone. Is that your Ebenezer? We are lost with what we do, but then it comes to us. It comes to us. Ebenezers are symbols in our lives that remind us what we need from God. Some of us have special verses. I have people often coming to me uh, after the service, a passage that I read or a verse that I read, and they say, that's my favorite verse. That verse gets me through my days, gets me through some of the diff most difficult times in my life. I love that verse. That's their Ebenezer. Some of us wear a cross, like the, the acolytes. They have a cross. They wear a cross on a, as an, on a necklace or, or on their lapel. Some of us have a, a special song or hymn that uplifts us and gives us encouragement and reminds us of old times when we would sing the old faithful hymns and, and remember when we would go to church with our family and our, our, our grandparents and our great-grandparents. Some of us have an, an event, a special event that we will never forget when God stepped in and performed a miracle in our life, Ebenezer. We all have Ebenezer's erected in our lives to remind us that God is always there. But I'm worried. I'm worried about those who don't have an Ebenezer. A couple of weeks ago, at our leadership training for our focus groups, I handed out an article from the Wall Street Journal. The article was reporting on a growing number of people who see church as not important 
in their lives. It was talking about communities back east. And in this one community, well, in this one community, Reading, Pennsylvania, they found that 75% of the Reading community do not attend church. 75%. In a study from the University of Chicago survey, or a survey from the University of Chicago, they found that in 2014, 26% of the people in America do not attend church, 26%. As opposed to in 1972, only 9% did not attend church. It's a drastic change. God and faith, God and faith in God seems to be a distant memory if it was a memory at all. More and more activities and events are crowding out the the need for church community. Faith in our nation is at its lowest level. Now, Here's the thing, all of us know these people that aren't coming to church. All of us know friends and neighbors and colleagues and and maybe even family members who do not attend and don't understand the need to come to a church. Building upon one's faith and their children's faith is, is not a priority. Like the Israelites of Samuel's day, everything around them seems to be more important. Now, don't get me wrong, they're not bad people. They're good friends. They're people you hang out with. They're, things you, they're people you work with. They're people that you do things with or maybe go out to dinner with. But they don't see church as important to their life as you do. <coughs> they're surrounded and overwhelmed by the world and all that the world offers. But my, here's my fear. If there is a growing number of people in our country and around the world that see no time or value in church or developing their relationship with God, then what happens when all things come tumbling in? Who do they turn to? When the enemy is at the door knocking, who's going to protect them? When life knocks them to their knees, who's going to pick them up? When tragedy strikes, who will be there to comfort them? That's my fear. And I don't think right now they even realize it. Now, some of you have already started in our focus groups. And the main reason why we started the focus groups is because I wanted to hear from you what church has meant to you, what you think we need to be doing in this church to help encourage people in your neighborhood, your friends, your colleagues, whatever, to maybe come to church and to see the value of what a relationship with the Lord can be. I want to hear from you. Why is church important to you? How has church helped you? What can you do to attract those around on, on the outside? I'm challenging you this day. We need you. We need you to to build up the church community, not just this community, but the church. But we also need you to help people on the outside see how valuable a relationship with God and a relationship with other brothers and sisters in Christ can be for your life. Let us pray. Gracious God, I know it's a little frightening to share your faith with others, and I pray that you will help us and be encouraged and strengthened. But more than that, just give us the opportunity to graciously share to others what your faith means to you, how it has helped you, how a relationship with others in a church community has strengthened and given you hope and encouragement because I know that there are thousands of people out there that need encouragement, need hope, need you more than all the other things that they're grabbing onto. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.